59th lecture of this lecture series on international arbitration practice. This lecture is a part of chapter 3 on responding to invocation of arbitration and defenses. In the last lecture, we discussed the defense arguments relating to extinctive prescription, acquiescence and abuse of right. In this lecture, we deal with the defenses of willful blindness, police powers and margin of appreciation. We will first discuss willful blindness. A claim may be declared inadmissible if the claimant failed to exercise due diligence when making the investment through a third party which had clearly engaged in corrupt or fraudulent behavior. Since the fraud or corruption itself is not committed by the claimant investor but by the third party agent of the claimant, the focus is on whether the claimant disregarded the conduct. In Churchill versus Indonesia, exit case in which the award was rendered on 6 December 2016, the tribunal held. Investment tribunals also held that investors must exercise a reasonable level of due diligence, especially when investing in risky business environments. In Anderson versus Costa Rica, for instance, the tribunal stated that prudent investment practice requires that any investor exercise due diligence before committing funds to any particular investment proposal. The scope of the due diligence depends on the particular circumstance of each case, such as the general business environment and includes ensuring that a proposed investment complies with local laws as well as investigating the reliability of a business partner and that partner's representations before deciding to invest. Where the host state is able to establish lack of due diligence by the investor, as noted above, the defense succeeds, thereby making the claim inadmissible. In the Churchill v. Indonesia case, the tribunal considered that the standard for establishing fraud was balance of probabilities. Ultimately, the tribunal held that forged documents were filed on behalf of the investor and that the investor failed to exercise due diligence when making the investment through a third party who was involved in the fraudulent behavior. The next defense is the exercise of police powers which is considered as an important defense and is usually a defense deployed at the merit stage. The phrase was coined by US Chief Justice John Marshall in Brown v. Maryland as has been held by the International Court of Justice in Nicaragua v. Colombia. The police powers include legislative acts or acts of administrative control, acts relating to the application and enforcement of criminal or civil law, acts regulating immigration, acts regulating fishing and other economic activities, naval patrols, as well as search and rescue missions. Exercise of governmental powers is a corollary of the concept of state sovereignty and is an expression of governmental authority. Incidents of the exercise of this sovereign power includes regulation of economic activity, public order, public utility, judicial liquidation, etc. The source of this power is general international law and tribunals under investment treaties have recognized this power. In TechMed versus Mexico, for instance, the tribunal held the principle that the state's exercise of its sovereign powers within the framework of its police power may cause economic damage to those subject to its powers as administered without entitling them to any compensation whatsoever is undisputable. There is no need for the treaty to expressly recognize this power. It is a matter of customary international law. Also, since it is the essence of state activity, exercise of police power should not be categorized as an exception. Investors have the burden of establishing that the exercise of police powers were abusive. In practice, the whole state has to come up with the prima facie justification that the measure complained of against was in the exercise of its regulatory powers. Then, the burden would fall on the claimant investor to establish that the state's regulatory actions were inconsistent with the exercise of its police powers. These could be established through lack of public purpose, discrimination, arbitrariness, lack of due process, 
effects and or or prior specific assurances. There are limits to the police power such as expropriation clause in the treaty which may provide for compensation to the investor. The next defense is margin of appreciation. This defense is also deployed in the merit stage. This defense evolved through civil law and was originally used in the context of derogation of human rights. Through this defense, deference is given to the national authorities to assess a situation because of their better position to understand it. To illustrate in Kemkura vs. Canada, an award dated 2 August 2010, the tribunal held in assessing whether the treatment afforded to the claimant's investment was in accordance with international minimum standard, the tribunal must take into account all the circumstances, including the fact that certain agencies manage highly specialized domains involving scientific and public policy determinations. This is not an abstract assessment circumscribed by a legal doctrine about margin of appreciation of specialized regulatory agencies. It is an assessment that must be conducted in concreto. Likewise, in Philip Moses, uh, Morris versus Uruguay, in the award dated 8 July 2016, the tribunal stated, the margin of appreciation is not limited to the context of the ECHR, that is European Court of Human Rights, but applies equally to claims arising under BITs. At least in the context such as public health, the responsibility for public health measures rests with the government and investment tribunals, should pay great deference to governmental judgments of national needs in matters such as the protection of public health. Here, the tribunal stated that the doctrine was not just applicable under the European Convention of Human Rights, but was also applicable to international investment law. There are similarities between police power and margin of appreciation doctrines. Both emanate out of state sovereignty and therefore their operation is not confined to any single investment discipline. That's all in this lecture. We will look at the other defenses in the next lecture. Bye-bye and stay safe.